I thought it would be fun to go over the Gardening in Canada top five moments of 2024. So these are the moments that you guys enjoyed the most according to Google Analytics out of all the videos I made this year. So let's get into it. Some of these are just straight up funny. I'm, you're very obviously here for entertainment purposes, mostly, mostly, or violence. One of them, you might be here for violence. I'm not too sure yet. So number one actually was the seven different potting soils video you can use that won't increase mold and don't have gnats. So this video, one section in particular you guys liked the most was on rice hulls. So let's take a listen to what I had to say. So if you're gonna go the rice hulls method, parboiled hulls is best idea. Now the other thing with this group is that they have the pH and the pH is right in that wheelhouse. It is a 6.7 to a 6.0, no, 7.7 to a 6.5. She's right in the sweet spot, which is wonderful for plant growth. There isn't much adjustment you have to do in that case, particularly if you were to couple this with a peat, which I should mention this, if you're making your own DIY mixes, make sure you're adding dolomite lime if you're using peat because it is so acidic that it actually can have the opposite intended effects. You actually need to bump that pH up with lime or the utilization of water from the tap that is a little bit more alkaline to kind of counteract it. That is more specific to like a very small scale setup, just FYI. This is the one where I'm pretty sure you guys are violent and you choose violence 99% of the time because I'm talking about gourds and growing gourds in Canada in a zone three. And my statement on how I'm going to grow gourds next year involves smashing and not like that sort of smash. Anyways, take a look. They're usually just decorative, mostly. But regardless, I'm gonna smash these once the fall season's done and I'm gonna save the seeds out of them. So. In typical fashion, my camera decided it is done for the year. So the last three we're gonna do from my PJs while we edit. Yes, you're welcome. Number three shows me that the Geek Crew is genuinely interested in how science works. And you don't steer away from something just because it's not what you believe. And that comes up in the egg video. So in this, I talk about anecdotal evidence and how when we do things, sometimes we see better results. And so therefore in our mind, we think, well, it has to be science. It has to be the best, but that's not always the case. However, I do always stress be your own garden scientist. If something works and someone tells you it doesn't, does it really matter? Just keep doing it. But. I do find this interesting because it does show me that you guys do enjoy stuff like this because you go back and replay it several times. So let's take a look. Okay, so anecdotal evidence is referring to what we experience outside of data. So if we experience better blooms, healthier plants, when we add eggshells and we chalk it up to being eggshells, we can anecdotally say that the eggshells benefited my plant makes sense. So I always encourage you guys to be your own garden scientists and try new and different things. There literally is no rules in gardening in case, in case you didn't get the memo. As influencers are really bad at trying to tell you there are rules, there aren't any. So if you chose to use uh, shells and you saw great results, then see, there's a benefit there. And that's anecdotal because we don't have access to nutrient biomass dehydrators that that actually tell us how much nutrients is in there and et cetera and so forth. And the fact that we can see healthier, bigger plants, less blossom and rot when we add eggshells, if that's the case, anecdotally, people say that that happens. I've never experienced it, but I've also never really added. I've personally never experienced it, but it, you know, that's something that people experience. And I'm not going to take that away from them. This next one is kind of funny. It just shows that you guys have a sense of humor and you replayed both of these several times and they are literally just pure comedy. There's nothing else in it because there's literally just a spike on these two instances. And I thank you guys for having a sense of humor because it makes my, my heart feel whole. And that is composting. Yeah, that's right. I only add to my compost once a year. If we ever wonder why my garden is not perfect, it's because of my nanimals. My nanimals, my children, um, they're bad. They're bad dogs. Okay, so while we observe Bronx in the wild behind us, let's review what we just spoke about. 
Coffee Grounds. That was the other one that you guys replayed a few times. And you in particular liked the segment where we spoke about what made up Coffee Grounds from a macro and a micronutrient standpoint. And this one I actually think has to do with the fact that everyone needs the lifeblood of coffee in their lives. And so everybody has a little bit of extra Coffee Grounds hanging around. Hence why we need to figure out what the heck to do with it. And this answers your questions. But outside of that, is there anything when it comes to the soil or to plants in general that can make the use of coffee grounds valuable? Number one is that it does have an interesting array of nutrients. It has both macro and micro. The macro, it is considered a nitrogen over a carbon, despite the fact that it is not green, which is valuable when it comes to composting in particular. And it also actually is high in a number of different micronutrients. Now, all plants in general will have micronutrients in them because there are 17 essential nutrients and the 17 essential nutrients are utilized by all plants. So just naturally plant biomass will have this in there. However, you could argue it is a little bit more valuable than just like a urea fertilizer, for example. And there you have it. The top five moments from 2024, the ones you guys repeat, replayed repeatedly. And the fact that two of these were solely because they're funny warms my heart. It means I'm with the right group of people, let's just say that. I want you guys to have a happy new year. Hopefully 2025 is awesome for you. Better than 2024. That's always the goal, is it not? Thank you for your support and your love. We hit 100,000 subscribers this year. And I will say, the only reason I'm here is because of you guys. So Geek Crew, love you tons. Is that a heart? I, is that, I'm a redhead. I don't know how to make hearts. There, that's a heart. <laughs> love you guys tons. I'll see you in 2025. Bye.